Now, the competition watchdog says it's found troubling evidence that people who buy leasehold properties are being treated unfairly. The Competition and Markets Authority says homeowners have been taken advantage of and prospective buyers misled by housing developers. This morning, it's announced it will take companies to court and it's calling for a change in the law. It's an issue we've covered on this programme on numerous occasions, including the story of Gary, who spoke to our reporter Colleen Harris in July last year. I want to get out. I don't want anything to, to do with these freeholders. They're, they've not been nice to me. They've come in and, and put me in a position where I have anxiety. Um, my antidepressants have um, doubled in dosage uh, because I, 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 sometimes I just can't cope. Gary Bailey bought his Victorian conversion flat in 2006. Initially, he says he was paying about £270 a year for ground rent and management fees. But when the freehold was sold to another freeholder, he received an annual service charge invoice for £1,240. If I pay them, I'm going to be short my mortgage or short bills. So. The, the pressure that's been put on me is, is absolutely horrible. The thing is, I had to save for that deposit like anyone buying a freehold property would. Mm -hmm. I pay my mortgage exactly the same as somebody that would have a freehold, mm -hmm. but I'm treated like a rental tenant. Well, that's one person affected. There are many more, of course. Jim Reid, our reporter, has been covering this for some time. Just fill us in again, Jim, on the, the background to this. As you said at the beginning, this is something this programme has been covered for, covering for three, four years now. You heard there from Gary, this also affects people who've bought new build properties in particular. To the, so there's two sort of groups. Gary bought uh, a convic Victorian converted flats. So there's two groups affected. The thing they've got in common is they've bought their properties with a leasehold contract rather than freehold. Now that means they generally have to pay, as you heard from Gary, an amount of ground rent each year. Normally that's when they start off the contract, when they buy the property, that's manageable. The problem comes when that amount suddenly shoots up and that can happen for two reasons. In Gary's case, someone else bought the right to his freehold and then suddenly his bill shot up from two, three hundred pounds a year up to £1,200 a year. In some of these other cases, buried in the small print of the contracts are stuff like every 10 years your ground rent will double, which might not sound that dramatic, but pretty quickly that can become incredibly expensive for people. It means some people have found it very difficult to even sell their properties, mm. to remortgage, and that is what the, the regulator is very concerned about today. So the regulator is now talking tough what is it saying? So this is the Competition and Markets Authority is the regulator in question. Today they're talking about worrying evidence, as they've put it, that they've found that people have been misled when they've been sold these leasehold contracts, leasehold deals. Three main reasons for that. One we've covered, which is this idea that your ground rent suddenly shoots up for various reasons. A second one, technically you need permission from the freeholder to make alterations to your property, so an extension putting new windows in, something like that. In some of these cases, the freeholder said, right, I'll give you permission if you pay me X amount of money. And that can also be very expensive. And thirdly, technically, as a leaseholder, you do have the ability to buy back that leasehold and make it into a freehold. But in some of these cases, that's incredibly difficult, especially if the freehold deal has been sold off by, for example, a developer to a third party, to an investment company. And that, again, is a concern that the regulators got this morning. Has there been any reaction from house builders yet? Not yet. We have tried to contact the, the, the organisation which represents house builders. Now, this is not just necessarily, you know, your big developers. It can be, like I say, these companies, these financial companies that have bought some of these leasehold contracts. So there's various people involved here. What the regulator has said this morning is it is willing to take, and this is important, direct enforcement action. So we think it'll talk to some of these companies, say, look, sort yourselves out, give these people better deals. Otherwise, we could go to the courts. They're also talking about working with the government here. This is the regulator to change the law, to make it safer, to make it a better deal for some of these people affected. Thanks, Jim. Let's talk now to the Conservative MP, Peter Bottomley. He's chair of an all-party group of MPs who have been looking at this issue for many months. Thank you for coming in. It's a big step. Is it going to solve the problem? It'll make an it approach to solving the problem. Mm -hmm. it, in an exact comparison, we're at the anti-slave trade element now, then you have to deal with the slaves. If you can stop more bad things happening, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. But think of the people who are stuck with leaseholds which, where they are prisoners. We've got the cladding prisoners who can't sell their homes or improve them. They're the only tenants who are being asked to pay for everything themselves. With this, you have the people who have second-hand doubling ground rent, not just houses, but flats as well. How can they be released? So I would add to the CMA's job, 
how about ruling unreasonable some of the terms and make them void? That will make the developers wake up, the, free, free, the free landlords and freeholders wake up. Do they have the power to do that? They do. If a term is ruled unfair, then it's void. So that's a, it's a sledgehammer. Retrospectively void, without any if legislation? It, if, or? if it's an unfair term, mm -hmm. yes, and they're the experts, they can talk to you. Okay. But I'm not suggesting that does most of the things. And what they're proposing on ground rents matters. What they're proposing on forfeiture matters. And you may remember the case of Dennis Jackson, who got into a dispute where he was roughly right and the freeholders roughly wrong. But they got a forfeiture order to take away £600,000 worth of his flat because of some other court case. We intervened, got that resolved, but the courts shouldn't allow that, the law shouldn't allow it, and Parliament ought to act. If I could just to say two other things. This has been going on for 10 years. Leasehold Knowledge Partnership and their trustees are the real experts. Government should have listened to them before. Until Gavin Barwell became a housing minister, nothing much happened. And the media didn't pay attention until your programme got involved. So I'd like to say a big thank you on behalf of leaseholders to you and all who work with you. Thank you. Um, does the law need to change? Yes, it does. Uh, first of all, it needs to say that uh, ground rents, if they have to exist at all, should be peanuts. So whether they double or not is just an extra bag of peanuts. It's not money. Because if you don't have money involved, you can solve all sorts of things. In the retirement field, safer or secure retirement needs to have a sort of common hold, leasehold type thing. And you need to have leaseholders recognised as having an interest in their property. So whether it's insurance or other things, they are a legal part. The law is desperately out of date. It's feudal. It needs changing. And I'm determined with other people in other parties to make sure it does happen. But it would be lovely if the media could be consistently involved. So through you, I make an invitation to the head of news at the BBC, who is your reporter who's involved in housing, who can keep a watching brief on this, because three stories out of four don't get covered because people don't understand them. I mean, as, as you know, we've been covering it for a long time. We will continue to cover it. Um, you obviously know this in great detail, the people affected. You've heard evidence from them before your committees. What, I mean, what would you say directly to the housing companies that, that know and that the, the people who own these freeholds that, that cannot be oblivious to the impact that they're having on these individuals? Well, there are a mixture of people. There are some who are good and innocent. And Bob Bessel, for example, with Retirement Solutions, 1,600 properties, no ground rents at all. Mm. They aren't needed, he says. Uh, you've got those who are careless, you've got those who are greedy, and you've got those who have been criminal, and some of them I've named in the House of Commons. I would say to each of them, if you've got grandchildren or if you haven't great nephews and nieces, and when they think of you after you're gone, well, they want to say, that was a city crook who exploited people. Was it someone who was a hard-headed business person who didn't care? Or were you a sensitive soul who could make money but also provide good services and properties. We, we revere the Cadburys. We revere the people in uh, the Westerns, in bakeries. We revere the good business people who had good business practices. Be one of them. Thank you very much. And do keep getting in touch, obviously, if you have been affected.